Well, you see, that's the whole point, is the word lie needs to be defined. Uh, sometimes not telling the truth, all of the truth, is your moral obligation. And you have a moral obligation to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth at all times to anyone who asks you. You would say, that's not in the Bible. The moral thing to do is for me not to tell you. You ain't getting nothing out of me. Those issues relating to whether you have a moral obligation to tell the whole truth at all times to everyone, that needs to be answered by pointing out you don't. You do not owe them the truth. And see, that's another fallacy. People run around thinking life is just, and they run around thinking you owe the truth to everyone. You don't. That's what the Bible teaches. That was from Maury's available audio tape from the REF, catalog number J54. If someone tells you ahead of time that they don't believe that it's wrong to lie, can you believe them for anything they say after that? If someone tells you they believe it's all right to lie if they get in a pinch, how can you believe them anyway? At any time. You're asking about the agreement of the parties. I have a copy of it right here. And uh, this is what we had to go into. We had to go into an ordeal since Mr. Morey did not want to pay us back the money that he stated he was to pay us on his income tax and all the ledger records I had kept. He simply said that uh, you know, well, his wife basically said ma mainly at the staff meeting, these are unauthorized expenses. We don't owe you anything. You should just take it as a tax write-off and all this type of stuff. And that's when my morale for REF activities uh, dropped tremendously because I put a, most of my family savings into the REF uh, with the true belief that eventually I would get, get my money back, you know, to help pay my children's college fund. Uh, or other expenses for my family down the line just to have some backup savings. And uh, so I, uh, this is what led to this agreement of the parties thing then. I called uh, Mr. Morey on uh, May the 12th, 1994, after he got back from one of his uh, apparently numerous vacations he takes, and uh, uh, told him in the, with the witnesses on the phone of Jim Tungate and Emily Wessels, Gary's wife, that I was going to have to leave the REF. I didn't say I resigned from the REF. I said I was going to have to leave the REF once we got this, this debt situation resolved. We had to get the debt re situation resolved. And Mr. Morey kept asking me, well, will you stay? Will you stay? And he said, well, I don't think so, or maybe not, but possibly. But all I know right now is we need to get this debt thing resolved. And uh, that's what I mainly emphasize for over an hour on the phone with, uh, I've got two witnesses, as I said. As I was saying about this agreement of the parties that was signed, uh, Gary, just for a moment, could you establish exactly how this agreement came to, to be? It was a situation where Mr. Morey simply did not want to talk to us. Right. Uh, basically, we had called Robert Morey, and he didn't want to have any communication with us whatsoever. He referred us to uh, Humphrey Perez. And uh, Humphrey agreed to talk for Robert Morey. By the way, now listen, make sure you remember that this is to get your money paid back. That's what this is really right, all right, about. Right, exactly. 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 See, our interest is yeah. to get our money. Yeah. They don't want to pay us all that money they said they would pay us back. And I told Mr. Morey that uh, I was going to have to resign, but we had to get this, this debt thing solved first. They, they, uh, strung us out for a, a while there saying well we can get it resolved we'll get this figured out and and promise some different things but before we knew it uh the our, our texas bank uh our texas bank accounts were or at least the one was shut down we'll have to talk about the uh, secret bank account here after a while uh, it, it was shut down and without our knowledge or being even told about it the the ref uh, mailbox in austin texas was shut down without our being told about it uh, Moore even confiscated my personal home phone number, which was being used for REF since we were dealing, we were filling all the orders out of our my home for REF for years. Uh, my area code five one two four four one zero five nine two. He took it away from me, even though it was in my name, 
not the Research and Education Foundation. Of course, I called the phone company and was able to get it back. But, but uh, this all happened while we were supposedly working out a negotiation with Humphrey Perez, who was acting as uh, Mr. Morey's representative. And of course, in my opinion, he misrepresented several things there to keep us uh, strung out, you might say, having hope that this could be resolved in a nice way. Right. He had mentioned that he was going to negotiate this in a very fair fashion. And the next thing we know, I'm driving down to the bank to deposit some REF checks. And the REF checking accounts closed down. I mean, that's, this is how we find out about this stuff. Oh, and then, uh, it, it, it's uh, very, I mean, we can get into a lot of details here. We're trying to stick just to uh, the main events so, you know, people don't fall asleep. Uh, so uh, uh, what we'll uh, discuss then is uh, the situation then uh, turned into a, where Mr. Morey simply wouldn't talk to us, so we had to talk through Humphrey Perez, uh, who was acting as his representative. Uh, we realized we were going to have to get a lawyer because uh, they wanted to ship people, send people down here, pick up all our stuff that was in our possession, and then they promised that maybe they'd pay us some of the money back later. Okay. And uh, in fact, Gary, I think you have a, a, a document or a record that you showed me earlier before we started filming of a book contract that Mr. Mori had signed for Islamic invasion where he got so much money. Right. Do you have that on you? And could you show that to the cameras real quick um, and uh, explain the significance for a moment? And while he's looking that up, it, it just goes back to the fact that for years we were expecting to be paid back something and uh, did not, did not uh, re receive it. We were always being promised at some point we would get this money back, but it, it just didn't happen. Apparently, uh, oh, you had it right there. Right in my pocket. Oh, okay. Hey, go ahead and explain that for our viewers, and then I'll get back into this. Okay, this, this has reference to a letter which Robert Morey sent you a long time ago, back in 1991, and was asking for $3,000 so he could publish a book called Islam Unveiled, and uh, I believe you funded him $3,000. Right. There, we've got the documentation. It's also in my 10-page newsletter, Apologist for the 21st Century. But he eventually paid you back how much? Uh, $1,500, I believe. I got paid half of it, uh, and then I don't think I ever received any more. Okay. So, uh, anyway, when the book Islam Unveiled was republished under a new title called Islamic Invasion, the, from Harvest House. From Harvest House. The publisher of Harvest House agreed to pay Robert Morey $2.20 per book. And it says here roughly 7,000 books, Robert Morey. If this is a author's contract from Harvest House Publishers for a reprint of Islam Unveiled. And it's going to be entitled and, uh, a new title named Islamic Invasion. And part of the contract here... And it's signed by all parties concerned. Here are the signatures. You can see the signatures. There's Robert A. Morey signing this, and there's Harvest House signing that. And uh, part of the contract says that Harvest House is down here at the very bottom. Harvest House will pay $2.20 for each book of Islam Unveiled. And it says that Robert Morey has a roughly 7,000 books in his possession. of, So that'd be over $14,000 that Robert Morey would get. But he would have seven, they're, they're going to publish 7,000 books and he'll get $2 for each one? Is no, that that's how, how many copies Islam unveiled that Robert Morey had in his possession that he had already published with the $3,000 that you had financed. So when you gave him $3,000... That was for Islam unveiled. Right. And see, Harvest House is buying back those same books. Oh, is that what that is? Right. So they're buying back each copy oh, of the Islam. books I helped him fund. Right. Oh, okay. I didn't understand. So they paid See, him. Even I'm learning something here, folks. They paid him <laughs> two twenty, two twenty per book of Islam Unveiled. So and he has roughly seven thousand copies in his possession, and so that would mean over fourteen thousand uh, dollars that Robert Morey would get. But then we learn he never paid you back the three thousand dollars. Yeah, I, I never. I was always being told they were low on cash. They needed. Funding.